Touted as the cultural mecca of the South and home to many musicians, artists, and writers, we continue our look at college towns in the U.S. with a look at Oxford, Mississippi. Episode 97 starts right now. Welcome to the Family Vacationer with Rob and Danny. Rob and Danny. The go-to podcast for families on the move. Welcome, friends. I'm Rob. And I'm Danny. And this is episode 97 of the Family Vacationer. We're so happy to have you with us for another episode as we continue our look at college towns across the U.S. Now, last week, we started off this series with a look at Athens, Georgia, home to the 2022 college football champion, Georgia Bulldogs. And if you happen to miss that episode, you'll definitely want to go back and check it out. Lots of great information on Athens there. Now, don't forget, you can also follow the show on Instagram, on Facebook, and you can view the something new the kids are doing these days you can view the video version of the podcast on youtube now our 100th episode of the show is rapidly approaching and we would love to hear from you our listeners go to www.thefamilyvacationer.live forward slash 100th episode that's 100th episode and you can leave us an audio message we're going to play as many of those as we possibly can on that 100th show Yes, and today we are looking at Oxford, Mississippi, home to the University of Mississippi and the 2022 College World Series champion, Ole Miss Rebels. Oxford has a rich history and the quintessential small town experience. Now, the town is known as the home of Nobel Prize winning author William Faulkner. Now, many other authors have added to the town's reputation as a literary destination, including Larry Brown, Barry Hanna, Willie Morris, John Grisham, just to name a few. Now, the University of Mississippi was established in 1841 as the state's first university. Ole Miss, as the university is widely known, gives Oxford the energy that is unmistakable in college towns. Ole Miss didn't invent tailgating, but you know, if you've ever been to the Grove, you know, They have made it an art form. And joining us today to talk about Old Miss is Kenny Ferris, Executive Director of Visit Oxford. Kenny, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Glad to be here. Well, first off, congratulations are in order. I know when we first started talking about having you on the show, you were in Omaha cheering on the Rebels and the College World Series, Mm -hmm. which they won. So congratulations on that. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. I know I saw a um a fellow Arkansas, um, fellow SEC, um, Arkansas fan the other day. Um, I was at a golf tournament in Memphis this weekend and um, I had on an Ole Miss gear and he said, oh, you know, that was the real championship game when you guys beat us in the last <laughs> game of our series. I said, you're right. It really was. So uh, yeah. it was a great experience. Um, that was a, a big thing for our small schools. So mm-hmm. um, thank you for that. We're excited. You bet. Well, let's shift the focus. Let's talk about Saturdays in Oxford. Everybody's mm-hmm. on the lane train there in Ole Miss. That's right. Can you talk about like how Oxford changes during football weekends? What are some of the activities that are going on during a fo- typical football weekend? Absolutely. I know. Well, we, um, we're kind of bracing ourselves here um, because yeah. we, we completely change. So um, Oxford itself, you know, just right in the middle of North Mississippi, about an hour south from um, Memphis, we are very small, about um, 25,000 people. And then the student Mm. population is about 20,000. Now the county does kind of give us a little more um, population, but really it's a very small town still. Mm. Um, So when you have the students that double your population, the dynamic is um, skews very young. Um, And then you have a stadium, you know, that seats 65,000. And then a grove that probably holds 100, 150, who can really tell um, thousand, (laughs) then, you know, your your small town really swells. Um, So we become, uh, you know, a big city, but kind of with small town amenities, um, sort of just overnight. And it, it starts on Thursday. Um, my office at the visitor centers downtown and we're kind of the heart of, um, the town and really the major thoroughfare. A lot of businesses are still located on our square. Um, and so you can feel the energy about lunchtime on Thursday, everybody's coming into town and then 
Friday, um, you know, you, you kind of just, you're, you're here. So if you're um, downtown or you're on campus, you're kind of in the heart of everything that's going on. And um, it's a lot of fun. People, um, you know, want to get reservations at their favorite restaurants early and their favorite hotels and things like that. So they can have the best experience. Um, but it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a great atmosphere um, all the way from the square to the, to the um, school, which is a couple of miles apart. So it's a lot of fun. There's something well, different so, about college football, though, right? I mean, than the NFL. And, and then SEC football is. I don't know. It, you you it got really your team. Is, yeah. It really is. And, you know, I think part of the reason why SEC football is such a big deal is because there's not many cities within the SEC that have an NFL team that they really can pull for so yeah. um i mean down in new orleans obviously you've got the saints um mm -hmm. but i mean you know yeah, a no, lot of us are small to towns them, no. <laughs> i mean you know it's like alabama you know you've got those two you've got auburn and alabama you don't have an nfl team you know you right, have yeah. mississippi state and Ole miss um you know as of late the titans came to tennessee i mean when yeah. i was growing up they didn't even have that you know and so mm -hmm. um I think that's why the atmosphere and culture just became so big as compared to, um, you know, the big 12 or, or mm -hmm. another place in our country. It's just um, kind of all we had to cling to um, sure. because we don't have a lot of uh, major league sports um, in our area. Right. So that's why, you know, that's sort of my philosophy. Who knows if that's true, but um, yeah, I mean, Sounds I grew good. up going to every Saturday coming over to the Grove and going to the game and, um, you know, that's kind of for my family, that's just what we budget for the year. I mean, that's a, instead of a vacation, um, you know, we, we would do this or, or yeah. whatever. Now we kind of do this and because we live here, we don't travel um, and we get to still, you know, budget for a vacation, but um, you know, it's an expensive hobby, but it's kind of what we do together. <laughs> so fun. yeah. Well, <clears throat> so we can't credit Ole Miss with inventing tailgating, right? But true. you guys, <laughs> Take it to the next level at the Grove for, for people who've never been. I've been one time okay. and it, it's really unreal. How do you describe the atmosphere in the Grove uh, on a football yeah. Saturday? You know, it really is something that I suggest everyone experience. Of course, <laughs> I'm selling travel to the town, but, um, but it's, you know, I think um, like fancy Southern lawn party. Um, and that's, <laughs> you know, you come well-dressed even though you're outside and the elements, it could be raining. It could be freezing cold. It could, you could be just sweating to death. You know, you never know. Football season gives us all of, all of the different um, temperatures here in the South, but um, it is, you know, tents with chandeliers with silver platters and um you know not everybody does it that fancy um my tent that I go to is a little more kid friendly and family friendly um but but yeah I mean tablecloths are a must and um <laughs> you know you will see ladies in dresses you'll see college girls in heels um that's just kind of the culture and um, the tradition. And I think, you know, the tradition's the fun part, right? You don't always right. like to sing every Christmas carol, but you have to do it. It's Christmas. You know, yeah. it's kind of one of those. <laughs> right. You might not like wearing the heels, but yeah. you just got to do it because um, that's what you, you do. It. So, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I was, when I was researching this, I was trying to remember my experience at the Grove and, and how to like, <laughs> what to compare it to and it, there's really no there's really no comparison that I've seen it's just yeah. a unique fun college football experience it really is but I love to tell people you know if you've only ever been to Oxford for game day you have to come when there's no game day because I don't think you really yeah. understand the difference or the transformation unless you see the grove untouched you know I mean it's this, sure. this beautiful park like um area in the middle of our campus you know and um nothing will ever be built there it's protected it's um it's just a great landscape for bringing in all the tents and um and it just transformed in in an instant um you know so it, it's just a really exciting it's a really exciting thing to watch and yeah. um and to see i mean it's it's fun to get up early and walk through and look at everybody setting up and it's it's exciting so for sure.
So if you are planning to come to town for, for a football game, and I imagine it, it differs depending on the opponents, but how yeah. early do you recommend reserving a hotel room? Okay, so this is a million dollar question, right? Uh -huh. um, and all of um, my friends throughout the SEC, we talk about this a lot. Um, we all have this issue. The, the rooms really do sell out very quickly. Um, what we suggest is not go into a third party site. So um, not an Expedia or um, Travelocity or something like that. Those are great sites. But for this, um, you know, they only give so many rooms to those third parties. And so sometimes sure. it'll look like the whole town sold out and it's not. So you always wanna go directly to the property um, that you want to be um, that you want to stay at. So in other right. words, if, um, you know, if you're a Marriott customer, you know, look up the Marriott's and just, just give them a quick call the old fashioned way. Um, my mm -hmm. mom still books rooms that way. And, you know, I think <laughs> maybe she's onto something. Um, yeah. But a lot of times rooms will open up later. If you want kind of on their list, um, every property is different. So some will, um, They'll put kind of out a newsletter that says, hey, we're opening reservations on March the 3rd, you know, before football. And right. so, um, but you might not know that if you aren't following Visit Oxford or if you aren't on their um, mailing list per se. So you can do that. Um, if you know you want to come to a game, say you're a Missouri fan and you want to come to Ole Miss and experience Mizzou at Ole Miss, um, you know, I would suggest calling ahead of time because you know the date. And just asking, hey, what's your policy? But I would do that anywhere from a year to six months out. Um, mm. Just because, again, every property varies. But don't give up hope. If you really want to come um, <laughs> and you don't really care who your opponent is, obviously that's preseason. Um, SEC games are going to be your best bet to get a room and um, to get a room at a better price, honestly. So yeah. um, I would suggest, you know, if you want to just experience it, then um, try for one of those and try last minute. If you have flexibility and you're able to come, yeah. um, you know, week of even or two weeks before, just call the hotels and see. They're not always 100% sold out. So yeah, that's, right. that's kind of my... Yeah, the the third party uh, tip that's that's actually huge. And then also a lot of people, you know, travel with points, and it's kind of right. the same thing. As like I tell people, they only have they only set aside so many rooms, yes. especially during the busy season, uh, which would you're be right. college football season, to do to, to fulfill those. So if you're, you're looking right. to book with points, there's only so many rooms they're going to do that with. So you may have to end up actually paying for. I know. Great tips. I know, but yeah. you'll earn your you'll you'll earn your points for later. <laughs> That's true. That's just true. Come on. Yeah, that's good info. So we, we know the town and the surrounding community, they really make a difference, in, you know, with potential students who are considering where to go to college. So what are the areas in Oxford that you would recommend students and families checking out on their visit? Absolutely. So, um, you know, here at our visitor center, we have a walking tour guide. Oxford's a very historic um small southern town and so we have great architecture throughout the whole city um a lot of historic buildings um not to mention Roanoke which is home to William Faulkner um the Nobel Prize winning author so I always suggest that families come by and um either ask for a tour or get a walking tour that they can do on their own um and then to go by Roanoke. The university actually owns it. Um, and the curator is um, an employee of the University Museum. And they do a wonderful job. And the house is just a lot of fun to tour and, and kind of see a house of that era, um, which I think is becoming more and more rare for, for students as I get older. Um, you know, <laughs> when, when I toured it as a um, as an elementary school kid and there was a rotary phone in the kitchen. I was like, well, yeah, there's one in my grandparents' house too. But, you yeah. know, my kids now, um, <laughs> you know, they're rotary? fascinated by that, you know, and they're fascinated. Yeah. They're, the, his handwriting is on the wall with um, four digits, you know, and it's his um, dry cleaners or um, whoever, he, the doctor, and it's just four digits, you know, because that's yeah. all he had to dial. Um, so it's just, <laughs> it's kind of neat just to see a house of that era. And then, um, you know, you can't really say you've been in a lot of Nobel Prize winning author's homes. So sure. um, I always say to do that. And and his whole um, Yachna Matapa series that he actually won the Nobel Prize for is based here in Oxford. So, oh, okay. you know, you can walk around and see the, the things he's talking about in his books. And, you know, a young child is not going to be reading Faulkner, but 
you are likely <laughs> going to read him if you go to Ole Miss and um, take any literature course. So um, I think that it's an important thing to come and see and, and parents always love it. The surroundings of the house are really pretty as well. Um, and then, I mean, our dining scene is amazing. So um, definitely look uh, at our website and get all of the lists of kind of suggested places to eat. We have a, a couple of James Beard award-winning chefs here and lots mm. of nominations, which is um, uncommon for a town of our size. So, right. um, yeah. you know, we do always suggest that people look into to what restaurants we have and um, there it's kind of varies on price and atmosphere and um, caliber of, you know, attire that you should wear and things. So we've <laughs> kind of got a little bit of everything for everybody. Um, and, you know, we aren't that far from the Gulf Coast. So we have a lot of great seafood as well, yeah, yeah. Um, which is, you know, my favorite part. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then the square, um, like I mentioned before, is just our kind of cultural and business hub. Um, lots of great shopping um, that always surprises people um, when they're here. So um, yeah, those are kind of the main, the main things I wouldn't miss um, right. when coming into town. Gotcha. Well, so when families are coming in to preview the university, typically yeah. you'll have some, some smaller children, you know, in the family that are coming with, what's some right. things that they can do in town? Absolutely. That's a great question. Um, and we get that all the time since we're um, a college town in Dusky, um, a little older, but we have um, some really great parks. Um, my kids love Avent Park. There's actually a playground there that's a replica of our square. Um, so it's just kind of neat and special and it's really close to everything that I've been talking about. So it's easy yeah. to get to, of course, it's free. It's a public park. Um, so that's a fun place to just go burn some energy. Um, that that's always important to moms and dads yeah, uh, really, when traveling right. with smaller kids. And yes. then, um, I didn't mention square books before, um, but square books is obviously located on our square and it is a very popular independent bookstore. And we actually, um, they, they have four stores on the square, but they've got their original store square book. Um, that has a Mississippi author section as well as a Faulkner section, of course. And mm -hmm. then they have um, Square Books Junior. And so as Square Books Junior, obviously it's the kids' bookstore. Um, they also have toys that on Saturdays at 10, you can go see Miss Jill um, and she will read you kind of one of their newer stories. And she's really good um, playing her guitar and leading the kids and some songs and it's very oh, that's interactive awesome. and that's cool. yeah. um, it's a lot of fun. It's one of those things that makes you feel like you've kind of gone back in time a little bit yeah. um, and it's really popular. So if you're here on the weekends, um, you can do that. And um, yeah, so there's lots of great ice cream and yogurt to, to be had around <laughs> the square. So yeah, that, that's an easy trick that always works. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. Yeah. That is well, right. Well, okay. Can you tell us about events, festivals that go on that might interest families there? Sure. Absolutely. So um, they kind of happen seasonally, like most cities. Um, our, our kind of premier biggest event that we have is called Double Decker Arts Festival. Mm -hmm. um, and it happens at the end of April each year. So it's kind of the goodbye to the university students. Um, but there's something for everybody. Um, there's all day music on Saturday and then we have music Friday night as well. Um, and then all day Saturday, we have about 150 art vendors that take over the streets of our downtown area. It's completely close to traffic. And these are, um, it's, it's not crafty. It's really fun art. Um, and they are juried in from really all over. Um, we've had vendors from New York State um, Washington State, Florida, you know, they're kind of from all angles. Most of them are going to be in the southeastern regions just based on proximity, but it's a 25 year old festival and really popular. A lot of um, graduates and families will put it on their kind of calendar every year as their time to come back to town. Um, so it's a little bit of a homecoming, if you will. It's a lot of fun. We have a great kids area with games and, um, you know, kind of some like rides, kids kid type um, themed things. So again, something for everybody. And a lot of times it'll happen on an SEC baseball weekend. Mm -hmm. um, oh. Sometimes it will not. So it just sort of depends on um, how, how it falls. But when it does, um, 
I see a lot of women shopping and a lot of men <laughs> seem to go to the game. So, you know, to each their own, but, um, sure. <laughs> but it, it is kind of a fun time of year. So that is in the spring every year. Um, we have a film festival and that's in March, mm. the beginning of March each year. So before spring break, kind of when it's still cold out, um, it's a great time to um, huddle up and watch movies. Um, they've won quite a lot of awards and really get some great filmmakers each year. So if that's mm. your thing, um, you know, I definitely would suggest that. And again, they run the gamut of every type of film. Um, you know, that could be for any age. Um, we have a really fun thing that kids um, particularly like called the Fiber Festival. Mm. And it is in January. I'm kind of just like going all over. I'm just going kind of in order <laughs> no, of the way I'm thinking of them. But <laughs> yeah. um, the Fiber Festival is kind of a, it's a really specialized thing. So it's people who make anything out of fibers so if they make yarn out of a alpaca or um out of a out of llama hair you know they're there um quilting is happening um you know it's it's really educational but at the same time it has quite a bit of a following that I was not aware of um I think we're in I think we had our 10th year last year and the first year that it came I was like what is that what I don't understand and then I went to it and I mean there are animals there and there's people um you know doing a will to make yarn and um just all these different things I didn't even know um, we're happy. So people travel right. from all over for that. And that's a lot of fun. Um, in the summer, in June, we have um, something called the Summer Sunset Series. Um, it's in the Grove. So not tailgating, but kind right. of a, pic a picnic for families. And it's on Sunday evenings um, in the Grove. And um, that kind of started around a welcome to the orientation families. Mm -hmm. um, they used to always come in on Sundays. Now it's gotten a little larger. So they come kind of all through the week, but um, there's not, it's a small Southern town. There's not a lot to do on Sunday nights. So we kind of just created this. And now um, there's some food trucks um, that come and things like that. Or you bring your own dinner and listen to some free live music. Um, and then we have live music that kind of pops up. It's called Tunes Around Town that we do throughout the um, football season. We can't really plan a lot of programming on top of football because we're already so slammed. But right. um, on the Friday evenings, and again, all of that is kind of pop up locations around town. And we put all that out on our Visit Oxford social media. So those are kind of our main things. But the, the kind of the newest, the best one that's coming up that we're planning now is called Holly Jolly Holidays. Ooh, um, hmm. and it's our um, Christmas event and it starts this year, November 21st. So the week of Thanksgiving and runs mm -hmm. until January the 2nd. Um, and we kind of have a open air pavilion area um, just about a mile from our downtown square. So a couple miles from the campus and we have ice skating there and a lot of just fun um, holiday events, carriage rides around the square on the weekends. And of course, Santa and um, just a lot of, a lot of fun um, holiday cheer. So that kind of came out of COVID. Um, it was something we could do and um, we were shocked at the um, response. So now it's, right. now it's annual, you know, when you do something and it goes over well, you kind of get stuck with it, but um, <laughs> we are, we're excited to do it. And um, it's a time when the students are going home or, um, you know, parents are coming to maybe move out their kid who's um, graduating um, in December. And so it just gives families a reason to come here and shop um, and surrounding areas too. So it's been a lot of fun. Awesome. Love Christmas. Yes. Yes, <laughs> us too. <laughs> so you you broadly mentioned the food scene in the area. We can't let you go mm -hmm. with right. that. We, we, <laughs> we, we got to drill. We got to drill deeper some here. Details? Yes, we need yeah. to know right. details, especially about the seafood. That's just for me. Yes, that. more okay. details on that. What, okay. What, what restaurants would you recommend families that they they can't miss? Sure. Okay. So, um, my, I mean, your number one that you, you've got to go to is Ajax Diner. I don't know if you were able to go when you were here um, when you came to the Grove. Probably not because the Grove so. kind of takes you in and you can't get out. But <laughs> right. um, Ajax Diner is going to be 
what we call a meat and three. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, their veggies are the three and the meat, obviously. But um, you can also get a veggie plate, which is like mac and cheese is a veggie, you know, uh, things that are <laughs> loosely, um, not veggies. Loosely are, called vegetable. Yes, yeah. it's, so. it's basically a side, but there they, they call it a veggie. Um, right. So you've got to go to Ajax. My kids love it. Um, it's like the type of place that you blow the toothpick through the straw, you know, it sticks to the ceiling. It's real quirky. Their right. art collection in there is, is crazy. Um, it's just a real um, kind of fun vibe. Um, it's right there on the square. Um, Proud Larry's is, um, is a music venue, but it's also kind of the best place to get pizza or a burger, really good fries. So families love it. It's my kid's one of their most favorite places to go and if you have little ones um and you ask they'll give you you know dough to play with um like the pizza yeah. dough so oh, it's just cool. kind of a fun yeah. um thing to do while you're waiting um and then big bad breakfast is oh. the place you have to go mm -hmm. if you have ever enjoyed bacon um or a biscuit it is the place who doesn't love so. bacon that's right. That's right. So um, Big Bad Breakfast is owned by John Currents and the City Grocery Restaurant Group. And he um, is a James Beard winner um, for his flagship restaurant, City Grocery. Um, he has lots of cookbooks. And then his um, a chef that works for him at, at Snack Bar, um, another restaurant, is um, also a James Beard winner. But so Big Bad Breakfast, wow. he is now franchised. It started here in Oxford and it is now kind of all over um, really it goes all the way up east and down um, to the Gulf Coast but um, it's been very successful because it's just so good um, and yeah. they actually serve breakfast and lunch and then snack bar that I was talking about where the other chef has won um, a James Beard award um, it is the best to me it's one of the best places to go for seafood so they have an oyster bar mm -hmm. and oh. they always have um fresh gulf fish so um you know if, if you like redfish or you know, any any of them their their grouper they're going to have that as their special um and to me it, it's a little more fine dining um maybe like if you were here and you didn't have kids with you or if you had right. um yeah. like a college kid that could keep your kids and maybe it could be mom and dad's date night um but it is really good and so they share a, a kitchen with big bad breakfast so they're they're right beside each other mm -hmm. um and so one does dinner and then um breakfast and lunch and it's it's kind of crazy that they're so different but um but they're really they're delicious so i, I could keep going on yes. um <laughs> And on Bottle Tree Bakery is, um, it's been here over 25 years as well. Um, it's located on Van Buren, just kind of right off of the square. A great place to go for kids. They have, you know, cinnamon rolls that are kind of as big as your head. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of have to judge a bakery on their cinnamon roll, right? So right, um, right. Yeah, there's this, there's this really good, everything there is great. Um, and so, you know, obviously what kid doesn't like a bakery. So, um, that's a, that's a really popular place to go as well. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, honestly, you had us at bacon. So, I mean, I know, I, I know, yeah. I know. it's so visit. good. I'm gonna have to go eat breakfast there tomorrow now. See. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you tell us about some family friendly lodging in Oxford? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, one that I would suggest um, for families is, is is kind of new to us here. Home Two Suites. It's a mm. I mean, it's a brand that now is yeah. is all over. Um, but each each one has you know kind of like the kitchenette and the more full size um, refrigerator and everything. I think for people coming, especially for a football game, I'm like that is the best um, case scenario because you can kind of make what you're taking to the grove there in your room really easily. Um, right. So yeah. I suggest that they have a pool, um, which when I travel with my kids is, is kind of a must. A um, must. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Courtyard Marriott is really close to the downtown area and the school. It's actually located right in between um, both the um, university and the um the square so easy to get to both um it's also right on a walking trail which is our old railway trail so that's kind of a fun thing um that you could do you know with your kids if you stay at the courtyard marriott they have an indoor pool so if you come visit us um you know for holly jolly you could still go um 
swimming. Well, it's the, the south, winter. so it, it could actually still be warm it enough to get in the It could still be warm. Pool, so. That's right. You never know. You, That's true. you <laughs> never know. Yeah. You never know. Um, and then Town Place Suites um, or Town Place, which is um, out um, by our conference center. And when I say out, that's like a three minute drive um to kind of the middle of town <laughs> all but, the way um oh, all right. the way they have um they have an indoor and an outdoor pool they um have a great you know breakfast area and they're really close to that park that I mentioned earlier event mm. and then a lot of um, other restaurants and shops it's kind of a new and upcoming area of town called Oxford Commons um so I mean you could just kind of stay in that whole area and then if you were you know, here for a game, or if you were here to see your college student, it would be really easy to get to and from them. Um, but you and your kids could walk, you know, to things. And sometimes that's just handy. And um, so, yeah, so that would, those would be my, um, my top um, choices for sure. So, yeah. I love home too. When we were traveling with my daughter for soccer, yeah. we would seek those out. Those were perfect. Mm. Yeah. I know they are so, they're great. Um, yeah. especially with families for sure. So, well, so we can't let you go without asking, getting a little personal with you and asking yeah. what your favorite parts of town are. You may have already mentioned some of them, but when you have <laughs> visiting friends and family, where do you take them? Sure. Absolutely. So, um, you know, obviously, I mean, it's so I've said it 3000 times, but we'll, we would come to the square, um, right. and let them shop and, um, you know, get a coffee or an ice cream and, um, just look around. But if it was somebody like, if it's my, um, parents, you know, that have been here a thousand times and we just wanted to kind of get out and do something with the kids. Um, one of the, our favorite things to do is walk the Bailey's Woods Trail. So this trail, um, it starts at the University Museum on University Avenue, and then it goes to Roanoke, William Faulkner's home. Um, and it's, a, it's an area of land that he owned. Um, he named it Bailey's Woods. And, um, and, and he, he spent a lot of time in this area. And so it's a cut trail. Um, it's not very long. Um, it, it is a little hilly. We are in the hills of Mississippi um, before right. you get over to the flat delta um, so it's a little hilly but I mean my kids handle it great my parents who are um, you know they, they are pretty active but they're like pushing 70 um, so they they can handle it just fine um, it's a little over a mile so it's not any big deal if you wanted to turn around and walk back you could but what we'll do is we'll usually park at one of the two places walk it and then kind of walk to the square from there because you can and you know go get a drink or something and then mm -hmm. walk it back to the car so um that's that's one of my favorite things to do you're right in town you don't have to drive out of town um but you don't feel like you're in the middle of town because it's very wooded and, and especially in the fall with the foliage it's it's really beautiful so um those are some of my favorite things to do so yeah awesome yeah. Well, that's great information. Yes. So for more information on visiting Oxford, consult your travel agent and go to visit OxfordMS.com. <laughs> Kenny, thank you so much for being on the show with yeah, us. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Thanks. I hope to see you guys here soon. Hey, everyone. If you're ready to plan your next family vacation, call my dad. He would love to help you as a certified travel agent. He never charges a fee to help you plan your vacation. Email him at rjones at starstufftravel.com. Get started planning your vacation today. Well, that does it for this week's show. Join Rob and I next week as we take a look at Austin, Texas. We'll see you next time, friends. Thank you for listening to the Family Vacationer. Make sure and subscribe to hear more of Rob and Danny.